Okay, so this is the start to the giant aquarium. Um, I've just figured out the layout I want for the tunnel. So this is going to be, um, what is this, 64 by 48. Um, and it's going to be built inside a giant wooden crate. Uh, there's a lot to this. I've got a lot planned. Uh, there'll be a big plexiglass front, maybe even a plexiglass separator between kind of the, the interior of the, uh, the big tank and the walkway for the minifigures. Um, but this is going to be very tall. We've got a uh, kind of a motorized function planned as well. But this, this area here is going to be for the tunnel. So I've, I've poached these pieces out from my uh, ship in a bottle set and those are going to go here. And then I've got all of these pieces here that will get lined all around here. So it'll be kind of a half glass tunnel with a big rock structure in the middle. I think it's gonna look really awesome. It'll give us some space here to put some families and minifigures and things um, inside the tunnel. Looking out, you'll still be able to see those. And then we've got lots of space here to do um, extra rock work um, with this dark tan and then um, lots of crabs and vegetation and, and kind of coral reef cut type stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I just wanted to show off the start of this build. A brick universe is in um, less than a week and I promised everyone last year that I would have this done and I'm just now starting on it. Okay, so this is uh, going to be the big motorized portion of the aquarium. Uh, this is running super, super fast right now because I need my phone to control the speed, but I also need it to shoot this video. So um, it will be running much, much slower than this, but essentially uh, this is going to be sitting up high, way up out of frame here, um, above the entire display. Uh, hanging down from the edge of this track here is going to be um, sharks and fish and rays and all, all kinds of stuff. They're just going to be able to hook right onto these tracks, hook right on there like that. Uh, and there might be multiple lengths of these uh, clear um, arms that come down to hold them at just the right level because this is going to be pretty high. Uh, but essentially, you're going to see the, the sharks and everything swimming around in a circle. Now, this was pretty tough to uh, get going. And um, I didn't want to redo it because it took so long. I also don't want to redo it because it's a nice circle or pretty close to it um, instead of it being a square and having real sharp corners for the, for the fish to go around. Uh, but I realized after I got this done that it doesn't allow the fish to swim in a circle that can fit in what I was going to have as the aquarium. So I was going to have a uh, regular 32 by 32 base plate, um, two of those, and then a 16 by 32 in the back for kind of the behind the glass uh, place for the minifigures. However, the space in between, so I guess it would just be 32 studs, uh, was not big enough for this mechanism and the, the body of the, the larger animals to be going in a full circle and not hit anything uh, in between. So what I had to do was extend the entire build by another 16 studs. Um, so now it's just four uh, base plates uh, in a two by two pattern. Um, and I extended the, the tunnel system as well, just a, a little bit. So now, what's going to happen is there will be um, kind of the half glass tunnel here and you can see kind of how that's going to interface. Um, we've got these curved pieces here that will just snap on there. And then on the back side of this will be a flat wall to kind of box this whole section in and give me some uh, areas to detail maybe other small aquariums. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to put on the back wall. It might just be advertising and posters and things, or nothing at all. Not sure. Uh, you know, in a in a real aquarium that was built like this, there probably wouldn't be anything there because you wouldn't want people to be stopping and looking at you know some kind of small octopus or something, uh, and and disrupting the flow in this tiny tiny corridor um, of people. So I may not put anything there at all. But on top of that flat wall will be the rock that goes right in the middle. I put this plate on there just to hold these together, but there will be a rock pillar that comes up from the center of that. 
um, and then on top of that pillar is what what my motorized mechanism will sit on um, and I did want to build it all in a a nice neat little package here so that I could just literally slot it right in the top um, and it can just run by itself and then if it breaks or if I need to pull it out and fix it I could just pull the whole thing out um, and and do what I need to do to the motor to fix it or recharge the motor this is this is easy to uh, take this off and unplug and and recharge by the way I'm using circuit cubes um, this is the Bluetooth battery and then there's the uh, the motor right there that it hooks into uh, and they're wired or you can use magnets um, with these little metal posts that they have there's a bunch of different connection types um, but I really like them and they're they're pretty inexpensive so they fit in nice tight little places and and do some really cool things um, anyway check that out so uh, this also allows me to have a lot more space here in the front and around the sides for that uh, rock work and plant work and all the fish and everything that might be uh, hanging out here at the bottom and I've got a, a nice wide space here wider than before for um, the actual elevator shaft and um, walkways and, and other aquarium bits back there so uh, one thing here is I've created this little slot um, with these little arches and this is going to be tiled along the center uh, of these three studs so that a piece of plexiglass um, can just slide right in between and kind of put that barrier between. Um, I might I might try to do it with the windows, but I doubt that I will want to do that. I think it'll just end up being plexiglass glass in the end because uh, it is such a large space and I don't want to obst obstruct any vision through one sheet of plexi uh, and then, you know, back. 15 inches or so into some other details back there uh, on top of the fact that the uh, you know the patrons of the convention will probably be a foot or two away from this in the first place so I will be adding lights to all this um, and so in those back aquariums along the back wall there will be lights that will help a lot but um, I want to preserve as much of the visibility as possible a little progress update here um, I've got some wall built already. Um, I chose white because I have a ton of white and um, I did add some little headlight bricks here along the wall to do kind of a handrail. It's about the right height for a minifigure. I may end up tiling the bottom of this as well just to kind of smooth it off and give give just a couple of jumpers for the place uh, as places for the minifigures to stand. So that'll, that'll give them a little bit higher as well. So that's, I think, a good placement for the railing. And then I wanted some kind of detail up here um, because it is going to be quite tall. Um, so just to kind of give you an example here, this is going to be pretty tall. Let's see, one, two, three, four more bricks. So either on this level or the next, I think I want to do a little bit of a detail um, as kind of like a mosaic that you'd see, you know, a tiled um, mosaic pattern up on the high high side of the wall here. Um, so I was thinking of using one of these pieces and then at like a brick head brick and we can put a plate and then um, maybe some of these like wave looking tiles along in a pattern all the way around. And then we just come back and put um, another layer of brick on top of that. Kind of like that. Might add some uh, quarter round tiles in there as well. We can see about that. I'm gonna experiment, see how it goes. Okay, so I've made quite a bit of progress here. Um, I completed the wall and added that wave detail and the uh, handrail. I think that looks really, really great. Um, and we can see on this side kind of what it's gonna look like with all the glass and the minifigure inside. I've also finished up the detail back here. Um, so we've added kind of a, a notch in here, a channel that will uh, accept that sheet of plexiglass. Um, so the idea is that I'll just put a full sheet in there and then just kind of cut out a rounded rectangle out of the end, end of it so that it can just sit in there like that so this section will be open uh, for the, the doorways. I've decided that I need this center rock section 
to be this tall. Um, and that's in order for my mechanism to sit about right there. There we go. To allow for up to four lengths of this clear rod. for each of the animals. And that's to get that mechanism out of the way and to still allow lots of visibility through the main tank into the back wall um, and give me a, lots of variation for different heights of, uh, of these clear rods to have animals at different layers um, within the tank. So that is quite a bit of height that I need to add on top of this. Um, and it is going to require me to probably go um, studs not on top. So I think the direction I need to go is to um, add some tiles here and then create a center core of uh, probably brickhead bricks uh, in order to add stuff like these curved slopes and things like that to get the shaping that I want and really tackle the height um, even with even with two of these already, if I can find the right one. No, I can't, but that's pretty good. I do kind of want an hourglass shape here. Go in and back out. Um, I think that would be pretty interesting. And I'm going to try to keep the uh, center core here hollow. I don't know if I'm going to be adding lights um, or any power running up. Um, that mechanism is self-contained with the, with the power on it. Um, and that's for easy removability. But if I do need to add lights or whatever, um, this is hollow. At the bottom here, yep, you can see a little gap through the wall. Um, and this whole thing is hollow and there's a hole back here as well. So I could run power all the way through and up at the moment. And I'm gonna try and maintain that ability, uh, even if I don't ever use it. So I don't think I'll be adding lights inside here because there will be quite a bit of light coming from here. And honestly, these guys aren't the main fo focus. The focus um, is the animals. And so this is kind of a backdrop to that. So I don't think I'll be adding lights inside here. They wouldn't normally be in there anyway, I don't think so. Okay, so I just about finished this um, pillar here. And I uh, wanted to show you the technique. I'm using two parts primarily. They're both what I consider brickhead bricks or, or part of that family. So here's your, your standard one. Um, and then this one just has two extra studs on each side. Um, and the way that I'm using that is, you can kind of see that they're staggered inside. And I'm keeping that hollow core um, to retain the ability to run wires through this whole thing if I wanted to. Um, but I'm basically just putting one of these with the extra studs alternating. There's a black one, there's another black one, alternating on the corners. And then obviously I can't place this here because of those studs, but I can place it here, which creates that little gap. Um, it does save me some bricks, um, potentially, you know, two brickhead bricks per layer, which is quite a bit. Um, so as I go around, I just alternate this. And then I place the uh, brickheads, bricks on the other side. And then to lock it all together, I'm just placing uh, these dark tan plates along the sides. And uh, I did leave a gap at the bottom um, in order to make sure that all of these uh, plates were offset from the seams of the brickhead bricks. So now I should be able to you know, put on a plate, let's say even just this guy right here, and it'll cover that seam and lock everything together. To make this a little bit easier, I've made this little core that I can just kind of shove through the center and uh, and be able to really push on it now that it's you know solid uh, for the moment, but then I'll be able to just take it out. So I can slap that right on there, really push on it, put that guy right there, and just move on like that. And then this is gonna be sitting right on top here. I will fill that in. And we are just about to the top here. Um, there's just a few plates difference, and um, I will manage that uh, with some kind of hookup for setting the motorized mechanism on top. But that is the height. Uh, and then after that, I will be going through and adding in some details like this. And let's see, 
here. If I can do it the other way. Yep, like that to give it kind of that hourglass shape. And that should look pretty good. Yeah. All right, bit of an update here. Um, I've made a ton of progress on this center pillar. Um, thanks to a huge order that came in of just about every dark tan piece that I could get my hands on on my uh, local store. Shout out to Dotu Bricks, that's D-O-T-U Bricks on Bricklink. Uh, great prices, great uh, selection and service. Um, I went ahead and used those giant wing pieces on either side. They are going all the way across, extending out quite a bit, uh, but that gives me a good kind of silhouette to, to focus on here. I wanted that hourglass shape kind of heavy at the top um, to support my mechanism, which I believe, let me take my little center core support out, I believe will function quite nicely up here. Something like that. I'll get it to actually slot in properly. Um, and then I can have a shark. This one has a length of three of those clear struts on it. But I think I can go even further down to four maybe. Um, and that gives me a lots of, flexi lots of flexibility um, for how to place animals and creatures and groups of creatures. I'm experimenting as well. Um, with adding an entire kind of team of sharks, school of sharks, um, hammerhead specifically into one, one kind of peg or one or two here to get a, a group of them to go together. I think that would be really interesting. And I've got quite a few. Uh, I want to do the same thing with the stingrays as well. I've got quite a few stingrays. So I'm going to keep working on this, uh, but I like where this is going so far. Okay, so I've made an absolute mess of my workstation, but um, I think the center column is done as far as the you know actual silhouette of the entire thing. I think I'm I think I'm solid on this. Um, I intentionally left quite a few um, little I'm gonna call them hard points, little studs on here uh, to attach plants and and fishies and all of that later on. Um, I realize that this section is not very detailed, but I think I'm going to add quite a load of uh, kind of vines or coverage here in uh, coral form. So I think that's going to work out really well. Um, I will need to rework this um, because I do actually need the gray big 11 by 11 gear ring uh, for a different project. And I've got some yellow ones that I can use uh, coming from somebody else. So I need to actually take this entire thing apart and re-put it back together just the way it is, but in yellow instead of gray. Um, and then as far as that purple piece that was on the bottom, I think I'm just gonna replace it with this uh, new 16 by 16 dark tan plate. Um, so that'll mostly be the underside there. I think that's fine. I mean, this is uh, supposed to emulate like an artificial rock anyway, right? It's all made of concrete and everything inside an aquarium. So you would imagine some kind of large structural pillar that they added this onto. So I'm actually fully okay with the fact that you can see that it's pretty squared off. Um, yeah, so I will get that situated and start working on the side rock pieces. I think I'm basically finished with all three rock structures. Um, so they're in different heights and different sizes, which is what I wanted, kind of a, a bit more of an organic take on it. So this, just to give you some context, this entire build, all four base plates, um, they're going to be built into a wooden crate permanently. Um, so I do want it, I don't want it to permanently be affixed to the crate, it'll just slide in there, but the crate will be built specifically for this build um, with lighting and access to the front via a plexiglass sheet. Um, and then that plexiglass sheet that goes into the center there that slides into this little little groove here, giving the back wall of the tank. Um, all of that is gonna be inset into that wooden crate um, so that the entire crate can be slid under the table at the convention um, in order to put this entire massive aquarium underneath uh, the collaborative zoo. Uh, there will be an elevator shaft in the back 
that connects imaginarily <laughs> to an elevator on the top of the table. Um, so the minifigures in the main part of the zoo, you know, will, will appear to be going into the elevator and coming out down here and visiting the aquarium. I did recently pick up this set um, at quite of a discount, thanks to Target, but I really, really like these stickers right here. And I think I want those and their mirrored versions on the other side of the boat to be kind of swimming toward the double door uh, to the, I guess, entrance on the top to the elevator going down to the aquarium. So I'll be using um, probably the orange and white color scheme here um, to represent kind of the awning and the top of the the aquarium entrance up there. And uh, and those stickers will be will be really nice to go in there. There's a lot of other things in this set actually that I like. Um, it actually does come with the sunscreen piece, which is relatively new. I know it comes in a, a poly bag now, but um, this is a cool set. There's that sunscreen piece right there. A little one by one brick with the SPF 50 printed on it. Um, and it comes with some dolphins. I think I might take these frenzified dolphins and make them kind of a statue out front um, of the, uh, the elevator shaft at the top. That might end up happening. There's a lot of cool pieces in this set. So uh, the other thing I just did was I removed, let's see, I removed the gray gears from my mechanism and replaced them with yellow uh, because I need the gray gears for my Hailfire droid. That's also a mess. Don't look at that. Um, and so I was able to trade somebody in uh, in the Rochester Lego users group uh, for some yellow ones because it doesn't matter what color this thing is. And I think I'm going to mount this onto this uh, dark tan 16 by 16 plate. Uh, and then that whole thing will be sitting on these studs up here. And I think that's going to look great. Well, it won't look great, but it'll act great. And uh, hopefully that that crate will kind of block that and you'll only see the animals. Okay, so I wanted like a little diver's maintenance hatch um, on the side, probably over here, just to kind of add some more visual weight to this side since this rock is pushed back a little farther. So it'll just stand up um, a little doorway on its own. Again, this will be in a crate, so there'll be a wooden wall that's painted here. Um, so it'll look like it'll just go into a different section of the aquarium uh, for divers to, to come out and maintain the pool. Um, but I wanted this little hinge piece on the side, kind of sticking like that. So this is what I came up with to hold that hatch together. It's kind of a mess, but essentially we've got, you know, your kind of regular one by two snot brick and then a brickhead brick with studs on most of the sides. And then we're kind of building on the side. This one is just kind of hanging on there, but we'll probably provide some support um, once the rim of this is, is together because there is that little focus. There's that little overhang right there. So there's going to provide some support. That's just going to sneak right in there and hold, hold that up. These are not stuck on there, but we'll hold together via the rim and just kind of provide that dark gray backdrop um, to the kind of corner edges of our, our doorway there. Um, and then I will probably put a dark bluish gray uh, rim all the way around um, to include this this hinge on this side and um, then probably a white border around that, but we will see. Okay, so I've added that kind of layer of the dark bluish gray. Um, I may switch out this piece here with black just so that you can actually see it. Um, and then as far as the border of white, I've got a plate and a tile on the top and that gives me two options here for kind of wrapping that white uh, border around, either the curved or the uh, angled. The angled, I can just put a, a white plate there, one by six, and then um, fill this in with uh, five studs of tile, and that would just smooth all of that off on the edge there. Um, whereas I would need three layers here, a full brick's worth on the side, which will make it much thicker, however, uh, I kind of like this better because it does have that curve and we're going to keep that same kind of curved element uh, throughout um, as well as I'm able to 
add in the center stripe here, um, probably some detail with some alternating yellow and black. So I think I'm gonna try that. I might try it both ways and then see, see which one I like better um, actually building it out instead of just imagining. Okay, so here are the two different options. Um, on one half, we've got the two curves that match really nice. And we've got that extra detail. I did switch that hinge to black. And on this side, we've got the angular versus the curve, but it's more of an even rim around the whole thing. Um, I do like that it's even, but I think I'm gonna always err on the side of more detail. So I think I'm gonna go with the black and yellow. All right, I've decided to switch up the bottom a little bit. Um, I took out the kind of normal snot piece because, you know, it gives that little gap. It's unable to do this uh, kind of flush bottom. And I thought I was gonna be able to work around that. And it's just super annoying, which is why I like brickhead bricks, bricks so much is because you can put them in there and you can make them flush. What this did though was um, it did give me two extra studs here um, along the bottom so I can have a little bit of a, a, a lip raise the door up off the um, kind of tank of the uh, the floor of the tank a little bit um, so what I think I'm gonna do is put these little double cheese slopes in here and just set them like that and it just gives a little bit of a ramp up um, for no other reason really just to give a little bit more detail but it's probably not something you'd actually find in a situation like that I don't know okay so here's the kind of pad that it'll sit on and let's just place the door on there. This one piece wants to fall out, but I think it's gonna be pretty solid. Just like that. Now we've got a really simple diver set up, you know, coming out of the door. Going to do some work, brush some coral, maybe uh, capture a fish for uh, evaluation. I think this worked out really, really well. Okay, so I may have gotten slightly carried away and uh, forgot to film a couple of things. Sorry. I think it looks pretty good though. Um, what we've got going on here is basically every aquatic animal uh, aside from this pile of crabs that I've got in my collection or at least that I can find at the moment. Um, I've got a little school of fish here. I'm not sure I'm in love with that. I wish I had more colorful fish, honestly. Um, maybe I could swap these orange ones with the silver ones up here and vice versa, but um, it should be good to go. Um, I believe I can have uh, another creature down lower, you know, three sections of this long rod down, and there should be a little path coming through here that it can still make it around. Obviously, I'll go slow testing it out and, and see. Um, basically, I've got the great white, um, some hammerheads, quite a few hammerheads. Let's see if I've got, well, I've got those two and then two more of the gray ones. And then here's the, uh, I guess it's not a manta ray, a stingray, old school. Um, I may have another one of these actually. Here are the other two hammerheads. And then I have another turtle. And uh, all of those will get hooked up uh, to spin. And I may readjust depending on if I like that, uh, that amount hanging down and, and spinning like that or if I wanna add more or less. So I'm gonna keep working on it though. Not very much longer until Brick Universe. Okay, so here is the back of the build, um, and this is a little bit confusing, but for the convention, everyone will be seeing this from the other side. However, if you're a minifigure, you would be in this section looking through this pane. So it's a little bit confusing as far as like viewing port, viewing angle. Um, this is very like not pretty, not even complete, unrendered, you would even say. Um, however, for the humans that are actually going to be viewing this, you will never see this side. You will be looking through kind of the fourth wall 
seeing what the minifigures should be looking that way. So this is definitely kind of set up poorly for the minifigures, but, um, but better for the humans. So what I've done here is I've kind of laid out um, 16 studs of dark gray, and then um, I'm just kind of rough drafting what I want here. So again, this is going to be under the table and underground under the zoo. So I've got a bank of elevators here and um, hopefully a set of staircase, like staircases on either side to go up to like a second level, like a viewing platform. Um, so the elevators would be coming down from the surface down to this level. And then you could go through the tunnel as a minifigure. You could look through the window here, or you could come up the stairs and look at this viewing platform up at the top to see more of a better angle. And then up on that platform, I'm hoping to put some um, big glass panes to, uh, to have more smaller aquarium sections up here. However, I don't know if I love that because I pretty much used every single aquatic animal I had uh, in that portion of the build. If I come around here, we might be able to get a view. Yeah, you're not even really gonna be able to see it. So the elevators aren't super important, which is why I put them way back there and in the center because you're not gonna be able to see it that much. But if we take a sneak peek, there's the elevators back there. I made them white and orange because again, I wanna use this um, sticker sheet with the orange and white on the surface um, to have these kind of aquatic animals uh, featured and kind of leading towards the elevator bank up there. So I wanted the elevators to match down here as well. And um, you know, I'll do the exact same build up on the surface. Okay, so this is an absolute mess and I would be surprised if you can even see the build within the mess, but I've got the back wall on and we're kind of seeing it from this angle because you're just gonna be able to see peaks of it. Um, so if we look through here, we've got kind of an exhibit back there with some seahorses. Let's see here, like that. Uh, there's a touch pool up there, nothing fancy, but I really don't think you're gonna be able to see too much. Um, my wife made some jellyfish, which are awesome. And that's gonna be in that exhibit back there. And then there's just a single turtle in this one over here. Um, it's a different color than the other turtles I have. Can't even see it. There we go. Um, so that's just kind of going to be the backdrop. Um, I'm finished with the height of that wall. Again, this is all going to be in a crate, so there will be back wall to it. And um, that is, I guess, what I'm going to work on next. All right, the crate is done. That took me uh, way too long, but also a surprisingly short amount of time. Um, I do have plexiglass here that is routered. Uh, it's in a slot that I've routered into the edge. And then I've got some kind of pallet style feet on the bottom to make it easy to, to carry. It's super strong, um, lots of half inch board and then two by fours on the sides and a few on the back. Um, and then it's, I think, uh, three quarter inch on the back. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do at the front. I don't have a lid for this at the moment, or a, uh, I guess a front face to it. Um, I do definitely need one to protect the plexiglass, but I don't exactly know how I'm gonna do that. Uh, honestly, I probably just need to go get another one of these boards. I don't have any more of that, um, but I can grab one and then just kind of bolt it onto the front. Uh, I did make the top removable, and then obviously you can slide the plexi in and out once you get the top undone but I've just got these little cams in there that these bolts go all the way through and thread into those um, and then that's just I've got a spare allen wrench and a little uh, hex bit not hex bit a uh, flathead bit so uh, these are just spares and I put a little piece of mesh bag that I had just laying around forever so I can zip that up and keep the uh, the tools and bolts and everything um, all together always have tools to open it. Down here I've cut a little hole uh, to access the electronics. I don't have time to figure out a cover for this but essentially what happens here is I've got two wires that come out. One of them hooks into a USB power bank or 
a uh, you know like a USB tower for the uh, you know main power to the wall, and then this guy is just an extension cord. And what happens here is it goes into that little hole right there, and it feeds all the way through the top. There's the little hole, and it goes through that little gray arch and hooks onto that white wire right there. And that's gonna power the lights that are under here. Um, I did test it and it has some nice effect. All the sharks are taken off for transport. They're back there. Um, it has a nice effect. Uh, it kind of gives a water effect, honestly, with the light shining through the sharks as they're moving on the other fish. And then that, that yellow wire there is gonna go to the uh, circuit cube battery box to power the whole thing. Okay, uh, I've got to get going on this, but I will see you at Brick Universe. Okay, so this is Brick Universe 2024, April, and uh, this is the collaborative zoo that I've been working on, and we've got a lot of uh, really strong collaborators this year. Uh, so Dan Purdy has built all of that back there, uh, as well as provided the carousel set. Uh, and then we've ha we've got Joe here that's provided the beach, and Shira has provided a couple of the other exhibits uh, that I'll point out. But we've got the crocodiles. My son built the uh, the reptile and insect exhibit. We've got a bit of a uh, a conundrum here with the monkeys that have escaped, and they've stolen a bunch of bananas from the banana stand. So there's a scavenger hunt. Uh, to find all the banana bunches that are all throughout the zoo. And we've got some banana peels that are scattered around as well. My daughter won an award this morning for best youth for her sloth exhibit. Very proud. We've got the big cats. Mackenzie made the otter enclosure. All right, we added the Jurassic section to this zoo this year. So we just finished the big gate and that moves into the Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, the Dino Burger, and then the Brachiosaurs and the Spinosaurs. This will definitely get expanded on. I would love to do a Mosasaur Lagoon here, uh, added onto the kind of um, killer whale of the Orca exhibit. Um, and I want to have a Dino Burger restaurant rather than just a truck. I think that'd be great. And then obviously lots more enclosures for the dinosaurs as I have quite a few. Uh, going back over here, this is another new addition. So we've got the aquarium entrance here with the bank of elevators. And that is right above the aquarium. And now the elevators go right back to the back and you can come out and go into the, uh, the tunnel into the aquarium. And this is built on a giant gear rack up there and it's powered by circuit cubes to have everything spinning around. Got basically every aquatic animal that I had in my collection is now in this box. And I think it turned out really, really well. And that's the zoo this year. It's only gonna get bigger.